Good evening. We heard for years how Labour was going to rid the government of corruption and cronyism committed by the Tories and that, of course, everything under Keir Starmer's watch would be rainbows and unicorns. I say to all my fellow politicians, Labour and Tory, to change Britain, we must change ourselves. We need to clean up politics. No more VIP fast lanes. No more kickbacks for colleagues. No more revolving doors between government and the companies they regulate. I will restore standards in public life with a total crackdown on cronyism. Well, once again, it appears Labour's promises have been left wanting because it can be revealed tonight that Labour cabinet ministers received hundreds of thousands of pounds in union donations before dishing out billions of pounds in public sector pay rises. So Keir Starmer's top team have accepted nearly half a million pounds in cash and donations from Labour's union backers since 2019. Health Secretary Wes Streeting received £14,000 in support from unions over the past five years. Transport Secretary Louise Hay received £25,000, or just shy of it, 12000 of which was donated either to her local party or indirectly via the central party by the GMB union in January 2020. Home Secretary Yvette Cooper received £10,000 in indirect donations from GMB. Education Secretary Bridget Phillipson, who had a drinks reception sponsored by the Community Trade Union, has received a total of £3,500 in donations in the past five years. And even Labour MP and ministerial aide Liam Conlon, who, by the way, is the son of Partygate investigator and now Keir Starmer's chief of staff, Sue Gray, he accepted a four grand donation from train driver union Aslef just months before, before his department offered it a pay rise. So is it any surprise that this Labour government caved into union demand so quickly after taking power? The Mail on Sunday reports Starmer's public sector payday, including mega deals for junior doctors, train drivers, teachers, nurses and senior NHS managers, will cost Britain a staggering £14 billion. Most of that will be paid for by the taxpayer. So what's happened as well to those commentators, the celebrities and campaign groups who have spent years holding truth to power by taking the previous Tory government to task over similar behaviour? The silence is deafening. I'm talking about the likes of Led by Donkeys, the IPA drinking boars from Bristol, who as recently as last week were still spending their time chasing exiled former PM Liz Truss around with stupid stunts like this. To vote on, I think it was Bill Clinton's advisor who said it's the economy stupid. So I think that um, he will, he will um, probably win. On that, on that. I've, I've got a little. <laughs> So are you really holding truth to power or maybe are you just a bunch of hypocrites? Let's get the thoughts now of my panel, political commentator Jonathan Liss and communications officer for the IEA, Reem Ibrahim. OK, good evening, you two. Good evening. Good Hello. evening. Um, right, yeah, here we are. So uh, what would you make of this? Uh, Labour for years, they've been banging on about cronyism and corruption and transparent government. And it turns out that uh, in the years... Uh, prior to them taking government, they've taken half a million pounds in donations from unions. I mean, what's that about? Yes, well, this isn't exactly news. I mean, the Labour Party was literally established to support the unions, to be funded by the unions, and ultimately to bargain on behalf of the unions. So this isn't a surprise. We know that they're funded by the unions. But, of course, we can draw the conclusion that that is why they are much, much softer with the unions than any other party in government. Now, I think when we're having these conversations about public sector pay, public sector pay has to be seen in the context of public sector spending. Our debt to GDP ratio, our debt is currently almost at 100%, 30-year high of GDP. That is incredible. We spend huge amounts of money. We have to have conversations about what is fair. In my view, Aslef being given a pay rise to £69,000 a year and then deciding to subsequently strike again, you, you know, take an inch and they will ask for a mile. I think we have to have those conversations in the wider perspective. We cannot afford it and we have to be clear that the Labour Party and Keir Starmer need to be so much firmer with the unions. Jonathan Liss. 
Well, I think that, look, as Reem points out, um, the Labour Party exists to serve working people. Um, the unions are completely interwoven with the Labour Party and have been from the day Labour was born. So it's not a surprise that Labour uh, takes money from the unions and that Labour MPs take personal donations from the unions as well. It's also related to that absolutely embedded in Labour ideology that people, that working people should be paid fairly for the work they do. And that obviously we have had just had a period of extraordinarily high inflation. And so people, workers were being given uh, real terms pay cuts. And it, on, a, on a political level, the so, Labour... So is everyone else. On, look, on a political level. But on a political... £69,000, I mean, that, they're not struggling. Look, on a look, I think that we, most people support... Uh, people being given uh, fair pay, OK? And that actually, uh, when you're in the public sector and you do do really difficult jobs, uh, that are necessary jobs, then it's actually OK to pay people. Uh, but I think there's a political point as well, that Labour wanted to uh, have a reset. We've had a period of massive unrest. And when we're talking about these pay rises, we also have to contrast the loss, the, how much the strikes have cost. Mm -hmm. You know, it's actually, in the main, it's, more, it's cheaper to give these unions the pay rise they're asking for than to see sort of indefinite strikes. So I I think that we have a, one of the worst systems when it comes to our unions. Effectively, what we have allowed is private sector, private pet sector businesses, private sector organisations, which are unions, to negotiate with the government and effectively lobby them for special privileges. Well, exactly. So, so there, th th these far-left campaign groups, people like Carol Vorderman, led by donkeys, all the other... Led by donkeys, not far-left. They're centrists. They're, no, they're not. They're so centrists. You, you, know, you have to be joking. They, they don't they, attack Labour politicians they, they all, in they the same all, way. Slave hasn't been in power yet. They, they, have, were, they, they have been in power since July. They haven't, <laughs> they haven't had. They yeah. haven't had. Give them a chance. Look, 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 look. Come on, come on, come on. Of course they're chasing Liz Truss. That was hilarious. They don't care. They don't care about the Labour Party in the same way they care about the Labour Party. To be fair to them, look, to be fair to them, they're not in the room now, but to be fair to them, they have said, uh, we're not party political, we will be attacking Labour. Look, 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 look. Come on, come on. Look. Labour's been, in, Labour's, been, Labour's been in power for six weeks. Labour's going to make a lot of mistakes. We know that. And when they do, I'll be attacking them, criticising them, as other people will. And of course, they're they'll be holding them to account. They're too weak on unions. They are far too weak on unions. I'm sorry, but as left, uh, train drivers getting £69,000 a year, already just got a pay rise. And then effectively, after that, saying we're going to strike every single week I mean, for three Labour, months. Labour are really at the mercy, it's a tabloid phrase, really are at the mercy of their union paymasters. You award uh, a massive pay rise to train drivers, and what do they do? Weeks later, they say, we're still striking. We ben, ben, the Conservative we Party, look, the Conservative Party is in the pay of big business. No one ever, sort of, people, you know, yeah, some people, people didn't complain. But Johnson, yeah, the, the point of is, course, but the point is, the point is that parties have to earn, raise money from different sources. And obviously the Conservatives have traditionally got money from big business and sort of high net worth individual donors. And the Labour Party has a bit of that, but also from the unions. That's completely just prime well, and proper in the way our system works. I don't care where the money comes from. I just care what the policy looks like. And we know for a fact that the Labour Party is soft with unions because of where their money comes from, because of the funding. Now, regardless of what your perspective is on this, I actually think, and you're going to totally hate me for this, <laughs> I actually think that you, employers and unions should be allowed to negotiate freely without the interference of government. The socialist utopia Sweden not, doesn't have a minimum wage law at all. They have no minimum wage laws. Unions and employers negotiate freely. I think if you don't turn up to work, the employer has is, and is well within their right to fire that person. I yeah. think you should be allowed to fire strikers if, if, if it comes to that, if it comes to this point. OK, I just want some, uh, some transparency from these, uh, these people online. You know who you are, your far left agitators. You know, you make <laughs> out you're holding, you know, you're so virtuous, you're holding power to account and being noble and, mm. you know, making sure that the government's behaving itself. As soon as the Tories go, and you know, you've got your people in, Labour, you just keep attacking the people who aren't relevant anymore. Yeah, ben, I take ben, ben. all of our taxpayer money. We work hard. Everybody in this country works hard. And these people are effectively lobbying the government for special privileges and asking for more and more and more. We cannot afford it. We simply we cannot can afford, afford it. We cannot afford it. Of course we can afford it. Our debt is almost 100% of GDP. No, 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 no. It is absurd. Reen, we cannot you, afford Reen, it. You know perfectly well the governments have to make decisions about what the priorities are. I have to think that it's a priority and um, the working people are paid fairly. Uh, the government you know, has all kinds of absurd commitments about which people I'm sure watching this might disagree with about sort of funding Trident for example all governments have to make decisions but at the same time governments do have ways of raising revenue which ordinary households don't I'm sure label indeed well. indeed governments can do whatever the hell they want they can go and uh, rob pensioners they can go <laughs> and rob people who are willing to invest and take uh, risk rob all of us. in assets so just hike up and they can campaigns. invest in the economy yeah 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 got it okay Reem uh, Jonathan it's uh, Feeling rather lonely, just us three, but thank you very much. <laughs>